Hi, my name is Robin Donovan, and I'm the editor-in-chief of Science of the Times magazine. I'd like to first thank you for joining us for this informative webinar on investing in wide format. I would also like to thank our sponsor, Oki Data, and our three speakers, Troy Downey of APRAP, Mike McGrath, Jr. of All Pro Stickers, and Jared Foster of Action Signs. I would now like to turn it over to our moderator, Kelly Gornick. The first question for Troy is just to tell us briefly about your background and your start in the industry. Well, as far as our family, we were involved in the hot rod and vehicle outfit business about some 40 years ago when we started. So obviously custom paint was part of our daily lives. One of the things that we found here, what, 13, 14 years ago, was that the ability for us to actually digitally print. So all of those custom paint jobs that we either dreamed about or we found that we couldn't physically and or time or money would offer us the ability to spend the money on creating a paint job that was only 60% of what we expected. Here we find that digitally printing it, we could create instant gratification for ourselves on all of those types of paint jobs that we could have done years ago. So now we can experience all of those ideas in real time now and instant gratification. So fast forwarding to where we are today is we're able to create things that we would have never, ever been able to physically do before. So obviously the majority of industrial print and point of purchase and that really wasn't what piqued our attention in digital print. What piqued our attention was that we could simulate paint with vinyl now. So that's where we were and that's where we are today. So we're very excited to be in the large format print business. Great. Jared? I started out as a window tinter in an auto accessory business. Didn't really cut it as a window tinter, which was fortunate for me because they had a, what we called the sign department at the time. And so I started to work in the sign department, which eventually ended up being its own sign company. So I kind of grew in that company to the same company that I work for today, started in production, worked in the design, installation, and now I manage the company and have been with the company over 16 years. Mike? Well, I started as a screen printer for a family friend when I was 18 years old and worked for him for a number of years. After about six years, I kind of figured that I wanted to do something on my own, but I didn't want to necessarily compete with him because he was a friend. So I bought a plotter, and I started just by plotting stickers through the natural evolution of the sign industry. I went to a cartridge-style printer and then ended up with a number of inkjet printers and just grew the company from there. So that's how it all began. Why would somebody want to invest in wide format or who should be looking to invest in wide format? Well, that's a great question. And obviously, some of the folks here that are listening to us today, they're probably trying to navigate that question themselves is, am I a candidate? And first, the candidate would be someone that might be outsourcing or something like that for digital print today. But some of the other value-added programs could be someone that is in the embroidery business or the screen printing of in the T-shirt business those type of things. Another candidate for it would be people or companies that are in the vehicle upfit business. And I say vehicle upfit, whether they're putting wheels and tires on vehicles and wheel flares and things like that, they could be a great candidate for it as well. We started as a niche sign company, and what we were trying to do was not necessarily market to the public, but to other sign shops in the area that wouldn't have the machinery that we would have. So from our personal side, we wanted to invest in wide format because we wanted to provide something for other shops that they wouldn't have. It could either be a niche that you're trying to create or if you just had the amount of work that you couldn't currently do and you need to either expand or invest in something different. Yeah, to go along with that, I know if you are in the sign business right now and you are not printing digitally or doing so on a large format or wide format, I don't think you will be relevant in the future if it already hasn't affected you. So I think it's almost just to be able to adjust with technology and the times. Customers want vivid imagery that can only be done with wide format printing. 
how do you know when it makes sense financially to invest in wide format? Obviously, there's some soul searching that needs to be had there is that when you start digitally printing on your own, you need to figure out whether you've got the bandwidth or, in other words, the ability to execute all of those gates in production that it takes to be in the print business. Most people that are outsourcing, they know when they're ready through a little bit of coaching taking classes and doing these seminars, you're going to actually be able to vet yourself in when it is actually time. And obviously, to your point, is when does it financially make sense? Financially, it makes sense today. But the point is, do you have the bandwidth to absorb it? You know that you're being asked to do jobs you can't currently do, whether it's through a color limitation, you have a four-color printer, and they really want to see more grays or more half tones in your image, whether it be a car wrap or a banner, or people are asking you to do larger banners than you can currently handle. Obviously, that's when it makes sense financially at that point. Kind of going to the wholesale market, and if you are outsourcing that sort of thing, you are limited to that company, the quality of their work, their turnaround. And so there's a lot of things out of your hands, and you can potentially even lose clients when things out of your control are happening. So I think as soon as possible, bring that in-house. It seems like obviously your margins are typically better and you have that control over the product that's coming out of your shop. What are the top three things to consider when investing in wide format? I need to look at what's this platform, this value-added program going to cost me to implement? What's the return on investment? And when I talk about return on investment, I'm talking about the investment into equipment. So, for instance, if we've got a segment of everybody listening today, let's talk about entry level. Let's consider this a $15,000 printer to get into business. The majority of that market segment are two-year pieces of equipment. So when I talk about two-year investment, I'm saying that you're going to have to start repairing those pieces of equipment In the first two years, could I spend upwards of $15,000 in essence in my second year, literally equating what I paid for the piece of equipment just to keep it running? The beauty of the color painters, especially the new platform, the E-Series, it's still an industrial printer. That is what Oki Data is known for. All of their entire line of machines are all industrial. So they were built industrial first and foremost. When we talk about a return on investment on a color painter like an E-Series, you won't have to touch it for a minimum of three and most likely five. So the number one is return on investment. Well, to me, the top three things to consider would be, do you have the work to support what you're doing, number one? Do you have the personnel and the footprint ready to handle the workflow that's coming in? And then number three, do you have the support? And the support being not necessarily as important as the first two, but for me, I always tended to go with more of a brand name that I knew that there were a lot of machines and support out there for as opposed to trying to save a little bit of money and maybe buying an off-brand. One of the areas is I think you need to educate yourself on potential markets and kind of see where you can position yourself in the market. Maybe it's a niche market. Kind of what are people doing out there? Is there a need that's not being met? I know there's several people around the country with a printer, and they just serve a certain niche market, and they probably make a pretty good living off of that. What are some of the biggest mistakes people new to wide format make when they get started? Not paying attention to the details. Even for companies like ours, we have people in certain areas that are suited strongly in different aspects, whether it is application, whether it's design or it's production, it's workflow and or management. Just like any company, we've got people for all of those different areas. But for the average sign shop or the value-added program that someone would add to it, it may be a mom-and-pop operation. It may be one individual. It may be two or more. But at the end of the day, probably the biggest mistake is underestimating paying attention to the details. So to me, the most common mistake that happens is people will go out and buy a printer and then not have enough peripheral items to support the printer, whether it be 
a good rip program, whether it be a good laminator, whether it be a cutter that will work with the printer. So just doing the proper homework, I would say, for lack of a better word, up front to figure out what the other needs are besides just buying the printer and having the work. As a follow-up question, where should people begin? So you do work for a lot of small shops. And so, for instance, if any of those people wanted to purchase a printer and start printing some of their own things and try to figure out these things with the rip and the laminator and cutter, where is a good place to get that information? Is there education classes they should take is it just from their reseller or research online? Can you comment on that a little bit? Yeah, the best place to probably get that information is from your local sign supplier shop, whether that be a chain shop or just a local independent supplier. That's where you're going to probably get the initial support that you need. I've been amazed of what is available on the Internet or just searching on Google and the different documents that you can find or even forums of other people across the country. Even I've learned quite a bit just on YouTube videos of how to do different things. And it's almost become the first place I look now is I just Google it. It seems like there's so much available at this point in pretty much anything. What should someone look for in a wide format printer selection? Whether I'm indoor or outdoor, outdoor durability is the king. So there's a time and a place for all the different printers out there. And in the case of getting into the business, whether I make point-of-purchase stuff for indoor use or not, I want to make sure that if they were to take it outdoors, it is going to stand the test of time. Whether the client says, oh, I only need it to last three weeks, but yet it was out there for two years. I know that the quality of print that I laid down will stand the test of time. Color gamut is another one. Most all printers are pretty good at color. It's ensuring that it's pretty good at color day in and day out, whether you're in a high-pass mode or a low-pass mode, whether you're in production mode or you're in quality mode. I need to know that I don't have to babysit my printer. I kind of touched on it also, but balancing print quality and speed, Obviously, for us, speed is king, but quality absolutely needs to be maintained at all times. And then finally is my support mechanism. If I have a problem with one of my pieces of equipment, whether it's my printer, my cutter, my laminator, I want to make sure that when I buy my equipment through a distributor, that really before price even comes into play, I want to know that you can service if I have a problem. Number one, we want to make sure that the inks themselves are durable and good for outdoor use and that they're going to be applicable to everything that is common in the industry today. I would think you'd want something that is obviously able to handle the needs of the market that you're in. I know speed and quality are always important things. We had two printers previous to the two color painters that we have now, and we were actually able to replace two of the printers with one color painter, just the speed was so much faster. And so that was huge for us. We were able to stay ahead and get things done ahead of schedule instead of always being behind the gun. And when we bought a second color painter, now we're always ahead of schedule. So my next question is, Tell us about your experience with Oki's Color Painter Printers and what it has allowed you to do. I can say that I really didn't have the bandwidth to understand that speed or lack thereof was a big consideration when I first started. The one thing that piqued my attention was the Color Painter's print quality. And literally for the industry, especially the automotive industry, from a wraps print quality, any other printer in the market, it was like everyone else was on a square tire. And when I rolled out my color painter prints, it was like I rolled out a round tire in front of everybody. If it wasn't for the color painter, I don't think that we would have had that much traction. So I got to tell you, sheer quality the industrial platform that it has always been, we didn't have the understanding that all the others would break down and that a print head would cost $2,000 and that here I've got more invested in the second year of having a piece of equipment than what I paid for it. I didn't know how prevalent that was in the industry. We bought our first 
Oki Color Painter about five years ago. It was the 74-inch. And what it allowed us to do right away was we picked up a couple customers that we were unable to do work for because some of the colors we weren't able to get to, now we were able to get to. So we were able to pick up a couple clients with that. I believe one of the best things that we've been able to do since we've gotten the Oki Color Painter is the 3M MCS warranty that we're able to provide now, the fact that it's the matched component system. So 3M has endorsed the inks from the color painter essentially so that we can, with that build with the 3M vinyl, we can offer usually a better warranty than a lot of our competitors in our area. And also getting some additional 3M training, we've been able to not only warranty the material but also the installation of it. And so that's helped our company grow, be able to offer quite a bit more to our customers and just kind of separate ourselves from a lot of our competition. And a lot of what we do is vehicle-related, vehicle wraps, vehicle graphics, a lot of municipalities that we work with, and that usually is pretty important to them, the longevity of the vinyl and that they know that it's going to last. So just having that match with Oki as well as 3M has really helped us quite a bit. How can a new wide format business owner compete with established businesses in the area? So to get into it and be competitive, it's all about the details, paying attention to the details and perseverance. But I would hate to see someone here say, okay, I'm going from one industry that has nothing to do with what we do in large format, and I'm going to jump in with both feet. I got to tell you, I don't recommend that. I think that you need to do the math and you need to make sure that you have the bandwidth and the understanding of what you're about to get into. Well, first and foremost, how any new business can compete with established business is number one, just personal attention, quality print, being able to service that customer maybe better than an existing one. People always love personal service feel like they're a VIP customer, as it were. But if you're able to do what you say and say what you do, and it sounds pretty simple in a timely manner, you're not going to lose those customers. So if you can give them personal service, a quality product in a timely manner, those are the best three ways to compete with established businesses. I know that many times we've even been guilty of it ourselves. We land a good account for several years, and you can get comfortable if you're not careful, and you can let certain part of your service or quality slip in certain departments. And on the flip side, if you're new in the business or the market and you have competitors that have been there long term, You just want to get your name out there. You want to make appointments with the decision makers and just maybe even if you're just their backup plan, but just always be there. And when you do get that opportunity, you do get a foot in the door, you just have to obviously deliver because it seems like it doesn't matter who you are, how good of a company you are, it seems like we all slip at some point. There are endless application possibilities What are the most important applications to begin with, or what should someone be looking at? The one thing that you need to understand is that it's all about material selection so that you access the right adhesive technology, and everything that we do is considered outdoor durable so that I've got the entire program covered. Well, this is fairly straightforward. Obviously, the most important application to begin with are the ones that fill a need for your customer. So if you know that need up front while you're in the process of purchasing a machine, that helps with the process a lot. I was thinking things that are in your wheelhouse, things that you know that you can do well and that maybe match your equipment, your skills. What do you need to consider in terms of workflow with investing in wide format? If you're not paying attention in design, and you're taking it for granted that, oh, it's good enough, and you haven't checked it over with a fine-tooth comb, it can come over and bite you in the butt later to the extent that it makes the margin that you potentially would have made two times that cost of what you would have made in margin. So you can imagine that you need to be paying attention to the details. We touched on this a little bit earlier in the mistake section, 
But some of the things that you have to take into consideration is, number one, expansion eventually of when your business grows is your footprint going to be able to handle. You have to be able to have other machines to complement what you're doing, whether that's a good laminator to laminate vinyl that comes off, whether that's a hemming machine to hem the banners that comes off your machine, whether that's your graphic design area. Now you've got all this great machinery and all this stuff. You have the capability, whether it's through yourself or your employees, to create files that are going to be attention-grabbing enough that your customers are going to be happy. To go along with Mike there, when you have these additional pieces of equipment, maybe call them complementary pieces of equipment that work with the printer. One thing that we have found that's important is kind of making sure you have a general floor plan or layout of how you want things to look in your shop because things get busy as you get in the whirlwind of the daily grind, the work. It seems like once it's there, it's going to be there for a while. So you kind of want to plan out, again, where you want to lay out everything. Where does it make sense where the prints go? Once it's printed, it probably want to laminate them. And how does that whole workflow look in your shop as far as kind of a floor plan or an idea of where you're going to lay out all your equipment? Because you could find one little kink in your workflow could eventually start adding up in time. If it's walking across your shop or walking in circles, or you might find you have your one foot nailed to the floor if you're not careful. Thank you again for joining us for this webinar, and a big thank you to our sponsor, Okidata, and our three speakers. For more information, please visit Signs of the Times website at signweb.com.